Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And today on your screen, you do see the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Explorer 2, the 2021 model done for the 50th anniversary of that iconic tool watch, the would I would say the most professional watch for traveling on earth. And you see that we have, we are lucky to show you both versions, the one with the black and the white dial. subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. It is in 1971 when Rolex presented the first Explorer 2. It was a watch with a diameter of 38 millimeters and yes over the years the watch has added some size and actually the watch measures or has a diameter of 42 millimeters so that's the actual size of the Explorer 2. Perfect readability of course a wide open dial, wide, not white, it is white and wide, so you have perfect readability both of the actual time and of course the second time you're going to set. And I will show you how you do this. Important for you to know, 42 millimeters, I said it before. Um, then we do have, I always show you this, a so-called lug to lug distance from one end to the other, lug of 50 millimeter. That's important to know we do have a thickness of 12 millimeter and already now you can see one of these beautifully new part, uh, parts of the new design the flanks are now polished in a way that the light as you see it when i'm turning the watch slowly in the light towards the camera the light always reflects in the same equal manner and this polishing of the flanks adds to the known design of that Explorer a new facet that was not there before. Uh, okay, 11, 12 millimeters, sorry. I will now also tell you the distance in between the lugs. We are tapering from 22 millimeters here. Let me hold it straight into the camera we have 22 millimeters here and we're tapering down the bracelet is tapering down to the clasp and we are reaching 17 millimeters 17 millimeters here 17 millimeters and this is the oyster it's oyster steel of course what else and as you already recognize when i'm slowly turning the bracelet in the camera everything is matte. There are only a few polished parts. The one I showed before, the flanks on both sides. You also see here with the crown, the Rolex crown, screw down crown, of course, what else? And you see that also the links are polished from the side. You see the screws, you need to take out one of the links if you want to make some adjustments also here. The clasp, folding clasp, is of course polished. Going on here and you see, same happens here. And if I turn around, of course, you see screws. Yeah, of course. There it is. And on the back side, that's Rolex. You don't see, there is no see-through um, case. Um, yep, um, case back. It is a solid matte case back and underneath yeah there is the 3285 the latest generation Rolex now is using for their watches with the chronology escapement and lots of technical improvements it's a 4 hertz movement the balance wheel oscillates with 28,800 semi oscillations per hour I said it before you have the new chronology escapement uh, with optimized energy efficiency um, and uh, lots of components that add up anti-magnetic 
um, yeah, it makes the entire escapement be more or less anti-magnetic. Uh, the watch also uses the uh, paramagnetic blue Paragron Paragron hairspring with a Rolex overcoil. So it's really the best of the best, best of the best movement technology available actually on the market. Um, everything is there. 70 hours of power is here. Power reserve is also something you might, yeah, think about. It's quite something you can easily take the watch off and put it back on after, yeah, almost three days and it will still work. So if you're more into the black dial, of course, tastes are different. Different, that's what I always say in the videos. This is the black version. I will quickly run you through with the sizes, 42 millimeter. I know I, it, I'm repeating what I have been saying before, but just to show you also the black version, uh, tapering 22 to 17 millimeters. Once again, nothing changes here, of course. And also the lug to lug distance is 50 millimeters and the thickness of the case is 12 millimeter. But I wanted to show you the difference also in terms of dial. It's the black dial. Um, I would say, um, forgive me if, if some now might think, um, yeah, this is more the lifestyle explorer too, in my humble opinion. And the one with the white dial is really the tool watch, the most professional, maybe most professional tool watch in terms of indicating a second zone time, easy handle to easy, uh, easy adjustable and handleable um, second zone time. So this is more maybe lifestyle with the black dial. Also the um, readability is not, it is still perfect. No doubt you see the watch on your screens. The readability is excellent, of course, but the one with the white dial, it's incredible. And I will show you and explain you why this is the case. But this is the black, as you can see the difference. And what you see, yeah, you see this reflections yeah, that's uh, something that is how it is. Um, there is an anti-reflective treatment being used underneath the sapphire crystal, but not on top. Rolex took the decision not to um, use anti-reflective or not to give the glass an anti-reflective treatment on the surface um, until they say they find a anti-reflective treatment that will not scratch. So you still have that reflections. The effect, of course, if the dial is black, there are more reflections coming than if a dial is white. Both of the dials, the black and the white one, are lacquered dials and both watches feature 18 karat white gold indexes and hands. That's something. What now is done is that the um, uh, hands are lacquered as well here on the uh, version with the white dial and they have a matte surface finish. The indexes do have a matte on the edges, on the, they have a matte surface finish and the hands do have a matte surface finish. And this, of course, since it is a matte surface finish, will not reflect any light when light falls on a dial and will create an incredible readability. I think this is the most, let me say, yeah, the best of the best you can get if you want to have a watch with excellent readability. The orange hand, the third hand on the dial is of course linked to the hours and is actually showing a second zone time you independently can set. Actually, the watch is synchronized. So you see 10 o'clock here, 10 o'clock there. I've been synchronizing it, um, assuming we are in Geneva today. It's 10 o'clock and I always want to make the watches smile on your screen. So you always see them showing 10 past 10. I'm always doing this if you have been watching some of our videos. And yeah, the orange hand as well. Um, showing 10 o'clock and it is with that second hand you're reading a second zone time not time zone zone time indicated by the oyster steel basal with those engravings of 24 hours and um, this is the next thing I want to show you we are going to unscrew the crown and I will get in the first position on the first position of the crown um, and what now happens and this is that what made this watch when it was presented the Explorer 2 and 
the GMT2 were presented at the time being so special. You buy a Rolex watch, you buy a Rolex movement, you know that the company makes some incredible efforts to deliver a precision, a movement that is precise. They regulate the movement. They were cost certified. They, now they, the watches are, are called superlative chronometers. Today, the accuracy of those movements is minus two plus two seconds. This is nothing. If you want to make some little calculations with, uh, um, take 86,400 seconds of an entire day and then uh, yeah, try to find out what kind of deviation you have if you take two seconds. It's uh, accuracy of 99.99999 something percent and this is, yeah, couldn't be better. And so what would be the purpose when you are then traveling with the watch and you need to reset only the hour that the watch would stop? This would be total nonsense. And so what Rolex developed, an independent poss as possibility to independently set the hour hand. You see it? that the second hand did not stop. Why should it? And just in case we would have been traveling and it was 10 o'clock and we need to readjust time getting to another location. You just unscrew first position of the crown and then you can independently go forward and backward as much as you want. And you see even the date is changing. And if you want to go back, the date goes back again and you can independently reset any time you want. I'm going back to 10 o'clock and the watch still functions. You don't need to get a time signal or you don't need to get out your smartphone and readjust the seconds because it will still be accurate. And in case you need to do a presetting, what you do is let me stop it at zero. Uh, yep, I almost did it. So you see now when you pull out the crown in the second position, the second hand of course will stop, of course. To precisely set the watch with a time signal. That's what you do at zero. I didn't get it exactly, but you can imagine that you can really stop it at zero or 60. You pull out the crown second position and then when the time signal comes, you pull the crown and uh, you push the crown in again and you have the second hand also showing exact time. So now you can see I'm at 10 o'clock and now you can see when I'm turning the orange hand also starts to move either back to eight o'clock or forward. So what you do, you make a pre-adjustment wherever you are to get with the orange hand your local or home time. So two o'clock, wherever you are. And you make this pre-adjustment and let's make here, yeah, four o'clock. Well, yeah, maybe you can make six o'clock so you can really see <laughs> at six o'clock, you see here. And look how precise exactly this arrow of the orange hand points at 18 or you see here, I'm, it's really precise. There is no, you see, if it will be here or here, then we would say, okay, but it's really precise. Um, yeah, let me go back, 10 o'clock, once again, you can see now moving to my, 10 o'clock position, the one I always show you to make the watches smile at you as they should. 10 o'clock, you make your settings, you push the crown, the second hand starts to move again. Precision, minus two, plus two seconds. Superlative chronometer. The watches go to COSC, the movement goes to COSC. I have to be precise, the 30. 285 movement goes to COSC, is COSC certified, then the watch at Rolex is completely assembled and then they go and pass an internal test procedure. Water, shocks, temperature, magnetism, all kind of testing is done on the watches and then Rolex adds to the word of chronometer, superlative chronometer, certifying that this watch is not only a chronometer but a superlative chronometer and of course, accuracy is improved. You know, COSC is minus four plus six seconds and Rolex is improving that accuracy to minus two plus two seconds. That's almost quartz precision. Uh, not an ultra quad, but it's almost quartz precision. So, okay, um, you saw that. Easy adjustment, easy to do. And um, yeah, there's always one thing I always uh, like to show you. That's the change, the change of the date. So let me quickly do this. So you can see what happens if we come 
to midnight. You see that the orange hand is at 11 o'clock already. We're going around and now watch carefully what happens and you will see an instantaneous date change. Have you seen this? Oh, it's, it, I hardly could see it on the little monitor I'm working with. I hardly could see the date change so precisely. Midnight, you hit midnight and the date is instantaneously jumping whop, to the 29th. And I will go back. No worries, nothing happens. This is something the Rolex moving can take easily. And you see, you go back and you can readjust the watch in the way you want. And we're going back to my favorite setting of 10 o'clock. And you also saw this. So there we go, 10 o'clock. I will now push, second stop. And you have, the, you screw down the crown and the watch is waterproof to 100 meters. So all you need, you're always on the safe side with it. So the new Explorer 2 on my 17 centimeter wrist and you see that this yeah for Rolex huge watch 42 millimeters is the diameter um, looks gorgeous I have to say perfect at least for me I love size size matters for me when it comes to watches and yeah this bracelet is a little bit too big um, it hasn't been adjusted because yeah, that's the standard size it comes from. And you see there's lots of uh, space if you have a bigger wrist than mine. And even with that lug to lug distance, I personally think that this watch looks gorgeous on my wrist. Yes. What you might have already uh, been seeing on the watch is that uh, now uh, the Oyster bracelet ha is a kind of a concealed, has a kind of a concealed bracelet attachment into the locks of the case, so you don't see nothing. It looks like if the case is part of the bracelet or the bracelet is part, the bracelet is part of the case, so you don't see any difference. And this is something new, looks excellent and makes or delivers another dimension of quality. If you think how precise you have to manufacture both parts, the bracelet and the case, everything that if you insert the bracelet, that it fits as it is actually shown on your camera. So, okay, let me now show you the clasp. You have a security with the Rolex crown, polished as well, you open up, and then we, that's what you get. And of course, of course, of course, Easy Link. Yes, there's Easy Link. And Easy Link gives you the possibility to um, really add or take away some five millimeters of length adjustment just in case you need to do this. It is integrated into the clasp and I, it's difficult to show that, but what the only thing you do, you open up and you see, here are those five millimeters, either long or short. You close on the other side, on one of the both sides. This will be, if I pull in now, that's five plus five millimeters. And if I open up, let me do this again. If I open up and I close to the other side, minus five millimeters. Opening up here plus five millimeters, just have to close it, plus five. Very easy, very effective, and I would say those five millimeters are far enough to make it possible that you adjust the length if you sweat, if it's hot, nice idea to just add some five millimeters and get some fresh air in between your watch or your Explorer and your wrist. Are you ready for a loom shot to see what you get and I can promise you now, or I can promise you already before showing you the loom shot, it will be, it is amazing. That watch really, uh, literally, uh, yeah, has kind of a, a light memory. This uh, a chroma light uh, Rolex is using is really offering long readability when it is dark and it will make a loom shot. Look, blue emissions, there we go. Black or white, this is now the question. Of course, um, the price of this Explorer 2, the official price is 8,100 Swiss francs, including 7.7% of value added tax. But 
Um, this is the official price of the watch. And I, some of you watching my videos have already been reading lots of my remarks concerning those. Um, yeah, playing around, flipping watches, selling them, reselling them, etc., etc. Please, guys, do me a favor. One, whenever you think you want to buy such a watch, there's an official Rolex list price. Rolex thinks that the watch is worth 8,100 Swiss francs. Not 8,200, not 16,000, and not 4,000, 8,100. Please, I know it's hard to get them. You have to be on a waiting list, etc., etc. But try to buy the watch for the price that is published. Don't buy from the gray market or parallel market. Don't play the foolish games they play with you when people flip the watches, you sell them. If you can't get it, wait a while, you will get your watch. Then you have to decide in between black or white. That's tastes are different, of course. I would go for the white. I told you before, if I would buy me a Explorer, it would be for the purpose of having the perfect travel and tool watch. I would use it for traveling. I've been using my GMT Master lots for traveling, but this is really another dimension. It's a tool watch. That's not a fancy thing you wear on your wrist. It's a really tool watch offering everything you want. It's, it's almost indestructible. You have everything you need, precision, everything. And the black one might be the more yeah, sporty, the more, um, more yeah, the, Mr. Cool, the lifestyle type of, G, of, of, of Explorer you can get. Up to you to choose. The only thing I really um, ask you to do is don't play any games or don't be an idiot paying overpriced for such a watch. You will get your watch, you have to be patient, and yeah, the anticipation is the greatest joy, that's what we say. I know it's hard to get them, but if you play that game, I'm really disappointed. Um, I, wouldn't ask, I wouldn't want to read any stories about anyone buying such a watch for 16,000, I don't know how much they offered actually, even more. Okay, 8,100, once again, that's the price in Swiss francs, including the VAT, Swiss VAT. So thanks for watching, comments are welcome, of course. Um, let me know, white or black? Give me your thoughts, let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, and tell me how you liked it, how it looked on my wrist. My wrist size is 17 centimeters, just to make that clear, and how the watch looked like, and yeah, stay tuned on WatchAdvisor on YouTube, and see you soon, bye-bye.